God's name is the foundation for a spiritual way of life. Simran practice. Today on this Spiritual Awakening Radio podcast, says Baba Ram Singh, we waste our time in all our worldly attachments, our precious time. So that is futile. What we should have done instead was to do Simran and to do our meditation and follow the teachings of the masters. Kirpal Singh on Simran practice. Simran is a weapon against all dangers. It acts as a password to all spiritual planes. It gives strength and sustenance to the body and the mind during trouble and affliction and brings the soul near the master. Simran helps in the withdrawal of spirit currents from the body during meditation. In Simran lies the seed that helps in the development of the soul. Simran makes man introspective and concentrative. Extraordinary powers inevitably follow as a result of the concentration of mind in the inner planes, the inner regions. Says Kirpal Singh, remembrance of God is the main thing before us to find the way to him, to find the way to God. Simran gives pleasure and removes pain. By doing the Simran of the Supreme Lord, one merges in him. By Simran of holy names, we get rid of the thoughts of the world. One feels the presence of God. Simran bestows happiness, peace, and bliss, and leads us to a state of superconsciousness. According to Sant Kripal Singh, Simran is the first step of the spiritual ladder. The nameless God has been given many names over the centuries. There are countless divine names, sacred names, used as mantras or sacred words of remembrance in the various schools of spirituality. For the saints of the East, all names of the one God represent the nameless, formless God of love and compassion, who is timeless, spirit, and eternal truth. Simran is a term which means remembrance, a spiritual practice of remembering or being mindful of God by repeating his name or names. Devotees sing or chant various names for God. Higher spiritually and more within is the practice of manas jap, the mental repetition of God's name or names with the tongue of thought. In other words, repeating names of God within one's mind. The saints have always placed much greater emphasis upon mental Simran over vocal chant, as it takes one further within, via the seat of the soul, the third eye center. These sacred names are revealed to the spiritual seeker by a living master at the time of their initiation into Surat Shabad Yoga, the path of meditating upon the inner light and sound of God. In each of the booklets of the Satsang Discourses of Baba Ram Singh is a glossary, and this is the glossary entry for the word Simran. Repetition of names or thoughts. In Sant Mat, the Simran or remembrance of worldly thoughts is controlled through the Simran or remembrance of the five charged names. Repeated by an initiate throughout the day and when sitting for meditation as a means of collecting the thought currents at the third eye center. Simran is also used as a password to higher planes 
and protection from negative power influences. From the glossary of one of the satsang discourses of Baba Ram Singh. In the spiritual lineage of Baba Somanath and Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. There is, however, more to Simran than the repeating of sacred names. Simran must be approached with the right attitude, the right spirit, for one's intent determines how successful the practice will be and what effect it will have upon one's consciousness. Simran has never been intended to be a dry or lifeless mantra practice. The path of the Sants or Sant Mat Radhaswami is a bhakti path, a path of love and devotion for the Supreme Being. Thus the true masters the true Sat Gurus have always instructed their students to repeat God's name with love and devotion, as a lover calling out to one's beloved, the Lord of Love. Kabir says, keep your mind ever engrossed in the name of the Lord, as the lover's mind is ever engrossed in his beloved. He never forgets her for a single moment. Through day and night he remembers her. Happiness rests in ever-repeated Simran. Sorrow and suffering is removed by Simran. Kabir declares with utmost force and clarity, practice this Simran and be one with the Lord. What then is the practice of the name? It is a form of interior prayer by which a person learns to keep his or her attention always in the Lord, in every circumstance and situation, at all moments, through the day and night. It is a form of inner remembrance that leads to a heightened awareness beyond the limitations of the physical world and the portals of death. Through meditation on the name, or Nam Bhakti, one learns to withdraw one's attention away from the outer world. More on Simran the remembrance of God by the repetition, the mental repetition of his name or names. This is a fascinating quote. It comes from the book of Anmol Vajan by Sant Garbdas, one of the three or four successors of Swamiji Maharaj of Agra. I'm currently working on getting the whole book of Anmol Vajan translated for the first time ever into the English language so we might discover more treasures to be found in this wonderful book from the early days of the Radhaswami faith. I have managed to get a few things translated already. Someone asked this question of Sant Garab Das. Why have the saints advised the Simran or repetition of the five names, the concentration on them, and hearing their sound currents. And what fruit do those reap who practice Simran and concentration by themselves without being initiated by a Satguru? What a fascinating question. What's the benefit of doing Simran? And how does it affect hearing the inner sound going within and hearing the sound current? And what if you are repeating these names without being initiated by a Satguru? That's a fascinating part of the question, isn't it? What if you are not initiated by a true master of the highest level? Will this still be of benefit to you? Sant Garab Das's reply in the great Radhaswami classic, hopefully soon to appear in the English language, on Molvajan. 
The destination will not be attained until one does the practice of Simran with love and pangs of separation towards the Satguru and his grace. The Satsangis, the disciples of the Master, are aided by the five powers of the five inner regions in the same manner as the Satguru does. So long as one is not a student or Satsangi of a saint, but only practices Simran and Bhajan of his own accord, and enters into all actions as good actions, thus if he has saved himself from all evil deeds and words, he will be entitled to meet a Satguru eventually. What a fascinating answer to that question. You know, approach Simran, the repetition of the sacred names, the five names, or Radha Swami, or whatever name or names of God you have been initiated into. Repeat those names with love and devotion, or bhakti, and prem, as they say in Hindi, bhakti and prem, you will be assisted by the lords of the inner regions, as well as the master. But if you're just practicing this on your own, you know, the repetition of the names on your own, or if you got them from someone who is not a true master, that's another way of looking at that. And you are sincere. You know, the disciple is genuine, even if the master is not. You will be spiritually benefited by this practice. And divine grace will be extended to you. And you will eventually meet a true master, a Satguru, eventually. Absolutely fascinating advice and insight from Sant Garab Das. Sant Kirpal Singh, the account of those who have received initiation is in the hands of the Master from the time of initiation. If a disciple after initiation keeps faith and with intense love and strong longing for the master does not fall into bad habits and does not commit foul deeds but has not due to his adverse circumstances or for some other reasons been able to give full time to the spiritual practices he is after death made to stay at some intermediate stage on the inner planes he's saying to complete Bhajan and Simran before he or she is eventually taken upwards. Kripal Singh on spiritual practice and the afterlife. If you have begun your spiritual journey but have not gotten all that far during this life, you will, as a soul, dwell for a time in one of the inner regions and continue meditating there, doing Simran, the repetition of the names. And of course, Bhajan refers to becoming one with the audible life stream, the sound current. And then ascend further within to one of the higher heavens beyond after that. Fascinating passage from Sant Kirpal Singh on the afterlife of the Satsangi in some cases. Sant Kirpal Singh also says, So long as we do not learn to rise above body consciousness, we cannot even get the slightest idea of the reality within. We must uncover the self from the sheaths, the coverings of physical, astral, and causal, subtle bodies, all of which are illusory. We must attain self-awareness. Then alone can we hope to reach cosmic awareness. And yet beyond that, there is supercosmic awareness. The saints have always referred to the state of supercosmic consciousness. That's from a discourse of Sant Kripal Singh from the late 60s at Sawan Ashram 
in Delhi. Baba Ram Singh says, when we sit for meditation, we should not consider it a burden because this is the true work for which we have come into this life. So we have, we have gotten our initiations. We should not just leave just like that. We should make use of it. We should do our bhajan simran regularly. When we do our practice and we work on this, only then will we understand the master. Only then will we understand the Satguru and the Nam. So when we go back and here Baba Ram Singh is speaking to a gathering of Satsangis that have been attending a spiritual retreat in India at one of his ashrams. So there have been initiations conducted, group meditations, silent meditation done individually, and gatherings for satsang for like a, a week or two or 10 days, some period of time. So he's saying, when we go back, so when we go back, we should do this meditation daily, just like we follow a routine for other things that we do in our work, in our life. We should have this as part of our routine. And every day we should necessarily spend time and do that meditation. And when we sit for meditation, we should not consider it a burden because this is the true work for which we have come into this life. And we should make the most of this opportunity. Baba Ram Singh from a meditation talk given during a spiritual retreat that took place August 15th, 2022. Baba Ram Singh from a satsang discourse titled Simran is the most important step that the masters prescribe. In order to cut the mind's pull outside in this physical world, the masters require us to use a physical help. And that is in the form of these holy names, these alphabetical names, which we repeat. Because it is only by a physical intrusion that we will be able to get the mind out of its outward pull in this world. So therefore, to get our attention away from everything outside and focused within, it is very important for us to do the repetition of the holy names. That is why the masters keep repeating again and again and encouraging us to do our Simran. Time and again, they tell us that we have to keep on doing our Simran because then we will be able to get the attention of the soul focused again at the eye center. When we do Simran, we focus our attention at the eye center and the entire body becomes numb. And that is when the third eye opens and we are able to go within and realize ourselves. So by doing this Simran, we are able to withdraw our attention from the nine doors of the outward senses and go to the tenth door. It is only by Simran that we will be able to achieve all this. And that is why more importance is given for doing Simran rather than listening to the sound current. Initially, says Baba Ram Singh, more from Baba Ram Singh, more from Baba Ram Singh. It is Simran only which helps us to focus our attention from this world outside and come to the tenth door and go within. So we should do as much Simran as possible when we are eating or when we are walking or doing other mundane activities. We should continuously keep our mind focused on Simran and that will help us to more quickly move on this path. The more Simran you are able to do, 
the faster you will progress on this path and you will become successful that much faster. The slower your Simran practice is, the slower you will progress on the path. So therefore, it is necessary for all of us to do as much Simran as possible and to perfect our Simran. One of the proofs that our Simran is being done correctly is that in any kind of difficulty, we first remember Simran. So says Baba Ram Singh, if we are doing Simran all the time and every day, then automatically we will turn to Simran during some difficulty. And it becomes habitual for us. That's why it's important to do Simran all the time. And then it will be there for us automatically when we really, really, really need it. Simran bestows happiness, peace, and bliss and leads us to a state of superconsciousness. The repetition of any name or names of God is called Simran. Through it, an extraordinary current of consciousness enters the body. A quote from Hazur Baba Sawan Singh. Coming up next, readings from Goswami Tulsi Das on the benefits of Simran practice. Says Goswami Tulsi Das, there can be no happiness to the soul and no rest to the mind so long as one does not meditate on God, relinquishing desires, the abodes of sorrows. Repeat God's name, repeat God's name, repeat God's name, O deluded one. The name alone is the true ship for crossing this dreadful ocean of the world, this ocean of samsara. This is a prayer, your name, God's name. Your name is the fruit of all spiritual endeavors, the essence of the Vedas or scriptures, and the boat for crossing the river of mundane existence. Your name, my Lord, is the bridge by means of which souls cross over the ocean of mundane existence, samsara. Jai Sat Nam Sat Yaram Radha Swami. Fallen into the midstream, you are drowning, O blind and deluded one. Board the ship of the Lord's name and go safely to the other shore. The human body is a veritable boat to cross the ocean of the world. With God's grace for a favorable wind and a sat guru for a helmsman to steer this sturdy boat, a combination has become easily available. Carry on the repetition of God's name, remaining in the service or seva of a saint. This is the way to cross the ocean of the world, declares Sant Tulsi Das, also known as Goswami Tulsi Das. And everything is not digital here at Spiritual Awakening Radio. I'm holding a copy of a book out of actual physical book. It's not all PDF files and ebooks around here. This is from Goswami Tulsi Das. Those who devoutly carry on the holy repetition are able to cross the ocean of mundane existence. By carrying on the repetition of God's name with love and faith, O Tulsi, God showers his grace and grants good fortune even to the unfortunate. And I really like this part here because it really opens it up for all of us human beings in the world on planet Earth. The name repeated either with endearment or apathy, with indignation or laziness, diffuses happiness in all the ten directions. Even if men repeat the Lord's name under compulsion, the sins committed by them 
through many of their past lives are burned away. In whatever way anyone repeats the name, you, the Lord, on hearing it, hasten to go forward to receive him with respect. Isn't that wonderful? You know, it's, it's not a path for the already perfected, but for everyday human beings on planet Earth, under all circumstances, even if they're not uh, approaching Simran through the highest level of bhakti, but are still nevertheless doing Simran, they will spiritually benefit as a result of the practice and divine grace is extended to them. I really like that passage a lot from Goswami Tulsidas. couple more mystic poems of classic saints of India. I spend a lot of time reading, actually, the classic saints. Don't Waste a Moment. This is titled from the mystic poetry of Sina Navi. Wherever you may find yourself, do Simran. No other practice exists. I know for sure the one who helps devotees will set me free. He ignores our weaknesses, strengths, and status. He always runs to our help. Don't let a moment pass, says Sina, without remembering and repeating the name of the Supreme Being. Isn't that wonderful? Don't let a moment pass, says Sina without repeating and remembering the name of the Supreme Being. This is from the mystic poetry of Eknath of Maharashtra, Saint Eknath. Whatever you're doing, giving or taking, laughing or playing, singing or eating, keep repeating the name. With your every action, keep calling God. Alone or with others, fighting or grinding grain, moving or sitting, keep calling Him. At the end, when leaving your body, keep saying His name, says Eknath. And this is from the mystic poetry of Nivriti of Maharashtra. Those who live in God's love see the one in everyone. Those who wear the garland of the name are happy even here in the world. Those who embrace the name at the last moment of life, their home beyond awaits them. Those hearts in whom his presence lives says Nivriti, are done with this world. Thanks for joining me today for this Sant Mat Satsang podcast, this edition of Spiritual Awakening Radio, on how God's name is the foundation for a spiritual way of life, Simran practice. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Visit my website, spiritualawakeningradio.com. Click on the Sant Mat tab to find a web page providing a complete introduction to the path of the masters click on the anurag sagar tab to read a famous book attributed to the path of guru kabir the anurag sagar kabir's ocean of love read blogs listen to more podcasts 
Lots there at spiritualawakeningradio.com. Concluding today's program, a couple more quotes. Baba Somanath, the great disciple and one of the successors of Hazur Baba Samwan Singh. Repeat the Nam day and night because your life is passing away. With every moment your breaths are diminishing. Death is coming near. Says Somanath, through the grace of the Satguru, praise the glory of the Nam unendingly. Praise the glory of the Nam unendingly. Repeating the Simran with every breath, your soul quickly reaches the eternal abode. Merging yourself into the primal Lord, you will be liberated from the bondage of rebirth. And this is from Hazur Baba Samwan Singh, concluding today's program. To remember the Lord with every breath of our life is known as Simran. Simran is practiced with the ultimate aim of attaining communion with God. Simran should be done in accordance with the instructions of a master, a living master. The instructions of a master whose own soul has merged in God. Such Simran will result in the greatest good because it makes use of thought transference, master to disciple, which removes all obstacles that confront us in our transport to the upper regions. Thank you.